Hello again, this is Rich Troxler, aka Rich Trox, and welcome to the second installment of my surf fishing video series. My previous series of videos on reading beach structure prompted a lot of questions on why identifying structure was important and how to fish it once it was identified. This video will attempt to answer many of those questions. And now for the disclaimer. The information provided on this video is based solely on my own experiences and is not intended to be the be-all or end-all of fishing. It is intended solely to stimulate thought, provide direction, and encourage experimentation in the sincere hope that it may be of help to you on your surf fishing journey. End of disclaimer. In the first video of the series, Developing Effective Strategies, I laid out the four components needed for developing effective surf fishing strategies. The third component was structure. I also indicated that fishing structure was one of the several topics I would be covering as part of the series. So let's get started by defining what structure is. Structure comes in many forms, but in its simplest form, all structure is nothing more than some sort of edge. Structure could be considered the border or edge between two differing states of water. The three basic forms of structure in my book are physical structure, current structure, and temperature structure. Physical structure is exactly that. It's any form of physical object that causes water to move over it, under it, or around it, or simply surround it. Examples of physical structure are sandbars, points, channel elbows, holes, dock and bridge pilings, and rocks. There are others, but you get the idea. Current structure is the interface between two different water speeds. You won't need to understand the physics of fluid dynamics in order to identify current structure, as it's pretty easy to spot. Examples of current structure are ocean beach tidal rips, channel and inlet rip lines, and back eddies. Temperature structure is basically the transition line between warmer water and cooler water. The basic temperature structure is a thermocline. Temperature structure typically doesn't exist on the open beach except around inlets or outflows, but it can have an effect on calmer backwaters and bay systems, particularly those with some deeper water in them. So a cursory understanding of temperature structure can pay dividends when fishing during certain times of the year. I'm going to discuss both physical and current structure together, as it is frequently physical structure that generates current structure. In a previous video, I suggested an experiment where you take a bucket with some minnows in it and drop a penny to the bottom of it. Leave them undisturbed for about five minutes or so, and then go see where they are. In the bland sameness of the white bucket, they will have gathered around the only structure available, the penny. Such is the power and draw of physical structure. Physical structure draws fish for a variety of reasons. For some species, it may provide a place to hide from predators. Some forms of physical structure, such as dock pilings and bulkheads, might provide food sources like mussels and barnacles. Many predatory fish find a feeding advantage around physical structure. Some forms of physical structure provide shelter or shade. There are more, but the point is that physical structure has something to offer most any species of fish, both big and small. And all structure is nothing more than an edge, a transition point from one state to another. At this point, I can't come up with a logical way of laying out the information I want to cover, so I'm just going to start off with some basic concepts and see where it takes me. Water is the fish's realm. It's their world, and they know every nuance of it, and edges are an important part of it. Although I don't consider fish smart, I do believe them to be very highly developed from an instinctual standpoint, which means they don't do random. Where fish are concerned, I classify them into three groups. The first group is resident fish. These are fish that have set up shop for long periods of time, like spring, summer, or fall. They have found structure, forage, and conditions that suit them, and they are in no hurry to go anywhere else. The second group is semi-resident fish. These are fish that may only stay in the area for a short period of time before moving on, but have found suitable temporary structure forage and conditions for the short time they are here. The third group is cruisers. These are fish that are on their way to someplace else and haven't found suitable structure forage or conditions to hold them in any area long enough to be considered semi-resident fish. In all cases, these fish are looking for edges, both literally and figuratively. So when you seek to catch fish, you want to seek the same edges that fish seek. Again, both literally and figuratively. Yes, you can walk out onto a completely nondescript beach with no visible structure or bait around and cast a lure right in front of a cruising fish and actually catch that fish. But that's not a pattern that will consistently produce fish. So regardless of the type of fishing you do, you will almost always find fish near edges. 
If you ever watch those Saturday morning bass fishing shows, you'll hear the pros talking about finding fish along grass lines or under docks when the sun is high or near laydowns or submerged trees. All of these things in their simplest forms are nothing more than edges. The grass lines are just vertical edges of vegetation. Docks are vertical pilings. The shadow lines are nothing more than the edge or transition from light to dark. The rest are all edges in one form or another. And these guys fish in waters with little to no current. But once you add current to the mix, you now have physical structure creating current structure. And this is where things get a little more interesting. I can't think of a single current structure that isn't caused or created by some sort of physical structure. So instead of just listing a bunch of types of structure and telling you to go find them, I'm going to try and give you my insights on how I approach fishing based on edge recognition. I will basically cover three types of waters, those being inlets, bays, and open ocean beaches, and in no particular order. When I approach any spot to fish, I look to see what the water is doing and why it is doing it. Typical edge-based physical structures I look for on the open beach are sandbars, cuts, troughs, points, and holes. In inlets and bays, it would be changes in bottom contour, channel edges, docks, and bridge pilings. Changes in bottom contour generate corresponding wave or current structures, which help in identifying them. As I've already covered reading water in previous videos, I won't be spending much time on it here. When fishing inlets and bays, the primary current structures I seek are rips and eddies. Both tell you that something is happening with the bottom. And just for clarification, I define a rip as any visible seam between water moving at two different speeds. Here's some video filler while I talk. When I moved to Virginia and began fishing some of the local species, everybody told me to fish next to grass, that speckled trout and redfish like grass. And while you can make a case that in some areas bait fish hide in the grass at the higher stages of tide and get flushed out on the dropping tide, this isn't the case here. The short version is that grass banks are nothing more than edges that predators use to trap bait up against. So on my initial trips, I watched where people fished. Many fished grass banks that had shallow bottoms and no deep water nearby, which I quickly learned was relatively unproductive. Some fished deeper banks that were productive, and some just drifted around blind casting. I mean no disrespect to anybody, and it's all good if you're having a good time. I'm just trying to make a point based on my observations. So what immediately jumped out at me was that I didn't see anybody fishing channel edges or points or any of the contour drops. My guess is because there was no grass at these locations and everybody was focused on grass and not thinking in terms of edges. In this video, I'm anchored in a channel and fishing the channel edge. The rip line that defines the channel edge is visible, but please forgive my shaky head as I'm used to constantly looking around while I fish. The bottom sharply drops from around 2 feet on the flats down to 6 or 8 feet in the channel. This is a classic combination of edge structures, and most predatory fish that I've crossed paths with gravitate to places like this for two and sometimes three reasons. The first reason is that the channel contains current structure in the form of faster moving water, which produces the rip line you see. The faster water makes it more difficult for small bait fish to swim in. The second reason is that as the smaller bait fish get pushed off the flats by the dropping tide, the physical structure of the channel edge provides a surface for predatory fish to pin the bait fish up against. And the third reason, as was the case in this video, is that in the spring and fall, when the weather in the water is cooler, the water that is warmed in the shallow flats and marshes gets drained into the main channel during the outgoing tide. This temperature structure results in an edge of warmer water running along the channel edge where the flats empty into it. As fish are cold-blooded, the warmer water makes the fish more active and typically spurs a bite. In this next video, you can see me point out an area where a lesser channel joins in with the main channel forming a point. The rip line clearly defines the edges involved. Points and channel elbows are major fish attractors. In their simplest form, points and elbows are nothing more than a place where two edges merge. In addition, it is very common for points and elbows to generate back eddies as the moving water wraps around them. For those who aren't familiar with what a back eddy is, it's basically the circular motion of water where current reverses back on itself, frequently creating an area of calm water at its center. This illustration shows some typical physical structures and the various eddies they produce as moving water passes over or around them. The eddies are shown as circular arrows. 
Eddies are one of the prime current structures I look for, as I believe the edge between the calmer water of the eddy and the faster current of the channel provides predatory fish an effective place to launch feeding forays from while conserving energy between forays. So when I looked at this spot, a perfect storm of edges, it screamed fish to me. And although this speckled trout was just a little guy, there were several nice fish mixed in with them. The point, no pun intended, is that in my book, those fish were exactly where they were supposed to be. And this spot did not disappoint, as it was a fish or hit on every cast, as long as my cast landed in the zone at the end of the point where they were holding. In this clip, I'm anchored up tight of a drop in the bottom contour of this channel. Although the current was running very fast, the rip line is not easy to see in this video, but was very apparent in person. Bottom contour drops are natural fish attractors, particularly in strong currents, because they typically generate a back eddy near the bottom, which is a good place for predatory fish to wait for bait being swept by in the current above them. I pulled several good fish out of this rip, and the reason, once again, is edges, the combination of the physical edge of the bottom contour drop and the current edge of the back eddy. On a larger scale, this is the same scenario that is typically productive in ocean inlets and their near inlet channels. In this clip, I'm fishing for slot redfish, a.k.a. puppy drum, and is another example of thinking in terms of edges. This spot is the tip of a point where a shallow channel to my left and out of view washes into the channel I'm anchored in. The water depth goes from about 3 feet down to around 7 feet in the channel running next to the steep grass bank. The current really rips through this channel, so I found the little grass points and small coves behind them particularly interesting due to the aforementioned back eddies the little points were producing in their corresponding coves. As I quickly discovered, there was also some significant structure on the bottom next to the bank, which was sauce for the goose. I dropped a fresh piece of finger mullet right next to one of the coves, and it was immediately hit, almost pulling the rod out from my hand. I quickly released the fish, and on the next cast, after clearing the bottom structure, I hooked up again. Those fish were where they were supposed to be, and the reason they were there was edges. The large main point, the bottom contour change, the small points, the back eddies in the coves, the bottom snags, all basically edges and transitions. Edges are key in finding productive spots to fish. Here I'm fishing an oyster shell ridge that runs close to and parallel to the main boat channel. I'm standing where the large shallow area to my right empties into the main channel on my left. This 180 degree rotated shot shows where the two waters meet. Again, this is a combination of edges, the edge of the boat channel, the edge between the two different currents, the difference in temperature between the two waters, all edges. On the open beach, it's the same principles. Think edges and the more you can find in combination, the better off you are. Here are a few examples to give you something to think about. If the beach you are fishing has only isolated sandbars, then stick close to them. If your beach has a long sandbar, then wait for the higher stages of the tide because fish won't generally cross a shallow wave-beaten sandbar. My guess is that you need a minimum of three feet of water on the bar before fish will cross it. Then focus on fishing the back side of the bar if you can reach it and the lip area of the shore. If the sandbar has a cut in it, then stay in that area because this is where the fish will enter and leave the trough. Fish both inside edges of the trough. If there's sweep in the trough, fish the upsweep side of the cut first. This is where there is most likely current structure in the form of calmer water or back eddies. Also, if fishing bait, the scent will be carried down sweep across the cut. If you can find holes, particularly next to points, then fish them hard. Holes are my favorite form of beach structure, as the fish have easy access to the shore. Fish all around the sides and don't be afraid to fish the lip area. Most fish entering a hole will travel around the edges, and if abundant bait is in the area, will use the edges of shallow adjacent points to pin bait up against. For this reason and so many others, edges are key, and I can't stress this enough. I could go on for hours citing various productive combinations of structure and conditions, and the patterns associated with them, but at this point I'm starting to get burned out. So I hope that I've given you some things to think about, maybe get you to look at the waters you fish a little differently. Anybody can catch fish during a blitz, but to catch fish consistently, you have to dig a little deeper. For me, fishing has been a lifelong learning process that continues to this day, and I've loved every minute of it. Hopefully, you're enjoying your ride also. That's my view from the beach, so until next time, be well and catch him up.